Hi guys, uh, this is Shiva Reddy. Welcome to Core Java Tutorials. In this session, I explain uh, Java Virtual Machine internal architecture. So before we understand uh, about JVM, let us talk about uh, how Java program execute and then we will coming into the J uh, JVM architecture part. Whenever you return any uh, Java class file with .java file, then we are going to compile this file using the compiler, Java compiler. Java compiler. Once you compile the Java file, then it is going to create dot class file. This dot class file we call as a bytecode. Okay. Now this bytecode is going to be the input for the JVM. Now what JVM will do is it will read the bytecode and trying to execute the uh, Java uh, program. So in order to execute a bytecode internally JVM will have a different uh, um, components with the help of those components it is going to execute this Java program. So let us go ahead and understand internal uh, parts of the JVM. So I am going to explain this one using a diagrammatic representation. If you see uh, this uh, um, diagram here, first step of um, JVM or the first step of the process in order to execute the, the bytecode is first it loads the uh, first we need to load the class loader subsystems. What it means is whenever you run the JVM first of all it is going to load the classes there are three types of the loaders are available one is bootstrap loaders bootstrap loaders what bootstrap loaders are going to do is this uh, these class loaders loads the Java uh, Java related APIs like object classes and these type of classes are uh, this bootstrap loaders will load whenever you run the Java object class or whatever the uh, Java uh, API related classes this bootstrap loader is going to be loaded into the memory and then we have a another one in uh, another loader called as a extension loader what this extension loaders are going to do is these are going to load the rt.jar file uh, related uh, java classes like a security extensions those type of the jars these extension loaders is going uh, loaders will load and then we have a system loaders okay system loaders so these system loaders are uh, loads the user defined applications as well as whatever the classes you are going to define either in the class path or if you are using like a Eclipse then you you must know about the uh, build path so these two path whatever the jars it is available are the classes available by default the system uh, loaders will taking care of loading these classes into the memory once it loads all the cl related classes uh, to execute the Java program now what JVM is going to do is it is going to read the dot class file and this dot class file once it reads it is going to be loaded into the memory of JVM memory okay and then JVM memory once it loads the class then it will verify the bytecode is correct or not whatever the bytecode it has uh, the dot class file whatever we have uh, loaded into the memory it will verify whether the bytecode is as per the J, uh, JVM specification is matching or not if not then the JVM automatically throw the exception by printing the print stack trace of for that exception if it is correct then it, uh, once uh, JVM verifies the bytecode if it is successful then it is going to use the um, runtime data sorry runtime data 
uh, access layer to uh, to accommodate this uh, java file to store properly in the memory that means jvm will use the uh, runtime data areas to to allocate the memory for the whatever the java uh, whatever the dot class file we give into the jvm now it has a uh, runtime data areas has basically five components one is method area and another one is heap and th uh, another one is program counter and then java stack and then native method stacks so let us understand what is the method area so this method area is also called as a class area whenever you load a data cla uh, dot class file or the byte code uh, into the uh, into the jvm the all the methods fields and uh, class related data structures that will be stored in the method area and also whatever the static fields you are going to define in your java class file those will be placed in the method area okay so this is the one of the um, internal memory how jvm organizes and in that method area is the one component another one is the heap so whatever the objects you are going to create those objects uh, are going to be allocated in the heap let us consider you have a employee class so when you create a employee object that object will be placed in the heap and also the the heap will maintains a separate copy for the each uh, uh, instance and also it is going to allocate the memory for the instance variables that is the uh, uh, that is the concept of uh, heap and program counter so the program counter will maintain the list of addresses the current program execution at the same time and also it is going to maintain the instruction of the next command what ja, uh, which command it needs to uh, uh, execute in the java program and then java stack so java stack here the point is like method area and uh, heap both are actually a shared resources so this can be shared across all the threads but in the case of program counter and java stack this is separate for the whenever you create a thread the, so for that thread program counter and the java stack is going to be allocated for the each thread each thread has its own program counter and the java stack okay and uh, java stack basically contains uh, li uh, basically contains uh, the uh, there it it basically contains two threads one thread is for the main method and another thread is for the garbage collector and also java st uh, java stack maintains the list of uh, uh, operations uh, that is nothing but list of uh, methods it needs to be invoked so whatever the methods you want to perform in the java first it will be placed into the stack and based on that it is going to execute the uh, the order of the execution will be defined in the stack and also whatever the objects you are going to create the references will be in the java stack and actual addresses will be maintained in the heap okay so that is that is where we are uh, that is where java stack into the coming into the picture it always maintains the two th uh, two threads one is for main method and another one is for the garbage collector and then coming to the native method stacks stack so native method stacks whenever you are working with the in other than um, java program that is called as a native code so this native whenever you are working with like a c c++ code then the native method stack will maintain the list of um, variables as well as the methods which needs to be uh, executed by the native method interface by using the uh, native method libraries so that is that is the uh, where this native methods uh, uh, na native method stack coming into the picture whenever you are working with the other than uh, java code so you can def uh, this native method uh, stack will be uh, coming into the picture to maintain the operations performing on the native code okay now 
coming into the execution engine so once it allocated all the uh, memory it is allocated for the uh, allocated for the uh, java program now execution engine will coming into the picture where actual uh, bytecode is going to be executed in the execution engine we have uh, jvm can uh, execute in two ways one is using the interpreter interpreter and uh, another one is interpreter and uh, second one is JIT okay so JVM can choose any one of these uh, two um, execution process first one is interpreter what interpreter is uh, going to do is it it interprets the Java code that means first it will read the uh, read the Java, uh, Java code as a one line and then it will interpret interpret and then it is going to execute that thing but execute yeah execute this is the for each uh, that means execute for one by one line one by one so once you given any dot class file whenever it is come uh, running with the uh, interpreter first it is going to read that line and then it will interpret and then it is going to execute like that for each line till from starting it uh, going to the end it is going to inter uh, reads interpret and then execute the problem is the interpret is uh, with the interpreter interpreter is going to interpret the statement but it takes longer time to execute hence it is going to degrade the performance of the system hence in order to eliminate this um, uh, this desert, uh, in order to eliminate this uh, performance issue JVM will have a another um, another way another approach to execute a dot class file that is using the JIT JIT is nothing but just in time compiler what this JIT is going to do is first it is going to compile the code and then it it will compile the code compile the code and then it is going to be converted to the native method native code nothing but uh, native code once it compiles this the once it compiles the JIT will come uh, JIT will be create a native code so this native code will be stored in the cache so that no need to again and again uh, again compiling the code or native code it is not required so one time it is going to convert to a native code and then it is just simply execute it hence it saves a lot of time but the point is whenever you are working with the JIT JIT is only help if whatever the methods we are executing in the dot class file there should be a frequent execution should be happening but whenever you are executing a java program or a method it is only one time of execution then interpreter is going to be fast because in JIT, in JIT the compile time is going to be more than actual interpretation time by uh, taken by the interpreter okay so that is the that is the that is the uh, decision taken by the JVM whenever you are running the program then JVM checks how frequent actually this method or the program is going to be executed based on that JVM choose whether it should go with the interpreter interpreter or it should it should compile or it should run with the JIT so this will be taken care by the JVM based on the execution of the uh, Java methods or the code in the dot class file okay so this is high uh, this is at uh, hope uh, this is at the high level how JVM uh, internally uh, works when you are giving a dot class file so hope this concept is clear at a high level I am going to specify uh, I am going to iterate once again whenever you put the dot class file as an input to the class loader subsystem first it is going to load the Java related classes and then extension and then application related to the jars and also it will be loading the whatever the class files we are defining at the class path or at the uh, build path 
and next one once you given a uh, once these class loaders are loaded then it is going to take the help of runtime data access a uh, data areas to allocate the memory for the dot java file so based on the uh, dot class file whether the properties are the static variables or methods whatever we are defining in the dot class file it is going to allocate memory uh, one of these uh, five uh, instance uh, five uh, memory areas say method area basically contains the code related to the methods and uh, fields and variables and also it contains uh, it also holds the data for the static variables in the case of if whatever the object we are going to create in the java those objects actually re uh, stored in the heap memory program counter uh, contains the set of uh, execution uh, instructions currently happening and also what is the next uh, uh, execution or the next statement it used to execute and a java stack basically it has a two threads and one is for the main method another is one for the uh, garbage collection and also it holds the uh, execution sequence of the methods as well as the references of the object uh, whatever we are created and native method stack basically uh, reference whenever we are working with the native uh, code like uh, using uh, working with the C or C++ and uh, coming to the execution engine execution engine Java JVM will take a uh, two types of the execution path one using the interpreter and another one using the J, uh, JIT if you if the if there is a um, execution of a uh, method or a program it is very uh, rare then it is going to choose the interpreter as a best option to execute the program but the execution or the um, method execution it is more frequent then it is going to take the JIT as to compile and uh, it to compile and then it will convert it to the native code and then it is going to run the program hope uh, this uh, this concept is clear if you have any questions, comment on my YouTube video. Thanks for watching.